Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Rebound MBL show. My name is Ray, aka the Bushman, and as always, it's a family affair. I don't know why I know so many people, but it's a family affair. I'm here with someone I've known for how many years it's now, Kieran? I don't want to say because I feel really, really old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do I hear 10, 11, maybe 12 years? The Some, mean streets of Argyle. Some... Uh, <laughs> one of the most successful coaches I know with regards to development and just winning things. <laughs> my, good, <laughs> my, <laughs> my good, good, good ass friend, Kieran Matthews. How are you doing, my friend? I'm good, man. Thank you very much for having me. <laughs> oh, it's all good. It's all good. I have to, I have to celebrate you, man. First of all, I <laughs> want to say congratulations. You know, under 18s, moving mad, uh, National Cup winners. Um, be it at the extent of my local club, it is what it is. <laughs> um, you know, but you when you're coaching my sons and everything, I just really appreciate the way that you've, you know, handled yourself, handled being one of the best coaches in the country and um, just... Take you're gonna let, you're gonna get some of you above my head for that. <laughs> you know what? It is what it is. It is what it is. So from me to you as a, as a friend, congratulations, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. Talk to me. What was that? What was that whole experience like? You know, getting the to getting to that point and then winning it all at the end of it. It was huge, you know, like because last year the, those kids were in conference, right? So if we go from under eighteen conference to under eighteen prem and then make it to the finals and then actually winning putting together such a talented like a team just crazy stacked like literally one to 12 like all of them can play if they weren't if they were at any other club i'm saying that most of them would be stars like no matter where they are like it's it's a real blessing to have had or have that kind of team like they're all good kids they're all very respectful they all work hard and they all want to win they all want to be successful they're all very down to earth there's no you know none of them are douchebags like <laughs> are Original London Elite players. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. That's not a bad way. That's in a um, <laughs> like the no, the notorious <laughs> generation of miracles <laughs> that came out of nowhere and helped put London Elite on the map. Yeah, like, you know those kids are just great. It's been a fun year. It's very few issues, luckily. Luckily, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> first, I want to say, you know, watching it from, I wish I was, I wish I was in Manchester. You know, the plan was for me to obviously have a game myself, but. It got rescheduled last minute and I was fuming I couldn't head up to Manchester with you. But I do want to say one of the most entertaining things to see other than, you know, the basketball that you guys were playing was you and Daniel in a suit. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's that's something I'm going to take with me to the grave. And yeah. Dude, I, I saw one comment on the YouTube thing saying, why does the coach look like Kingpin? Oh, no. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> man. <laughs> It was it was nice to wear a suit. It was nice to dress up for basketball for once. Did you have a spare? Did you have a spare, knowing fully well what could have happened? I, I had a spare one in the back. All right, cool. I had a spare one in the back, just in case. Like I, I knew if I, I can rip this thing quite easily. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. It was the water bath at the end. You knew that was coming, so oh. you know. <laughs> it, it, the thing is, I just saw him all coming. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna throw my phone out. There's no way I'm losing yeah. another phone. They did the same thing to me. Um, when it was in EYBL last year. Okay. But under 17s, and uh, dude, I had to buy a new phone when I got back. Like, it was waterlogged, it was damaged. <laughs> like, I knew what was coming this time. <laughs> okay, talk to me about the players. Um, you know, you've, we've got, I'm saying we, because, you know, I'm part of the club as well. Um, you've got a lot of really talented individual players, you know, guys like Liam, um, guys like Moody and Anthony and Omar and guys that are really intelligent yeah. basketball players. What's it been developing them from where they were a year ago to where they are now? Even guys like Hunter, you know, what's that so, been like? So like I said, it's a blessing because they're all such good kids and they're all such good players and they're all so smart. You, As a coach, I can take a step back and like, you'll see it like in a lot of the games, like I might sit Moody down and Moody becomes a player coach. Or I might give, like, DA, I might let him call the defences for, like, five minutes or whatever it may be. It's been nice because I'm able to step back and give more opportunities for the guys to lead themselves, which is very difficult to do. But once you have a team like that, a very special team, a very smart team, a very capable team, it's very doable. 
And talk to me a little bit more about, you know, the transition from some of your under 18s playing men's basketball and how that's been for them. Oh, it's, it's been great for their development. Like, it's just been a great opportunity for them just to, again, get on court with a Division Two team, but also, like, a very successful Division Two team. Even to train with those with you guys is great for them development-wise. They understand what professional practice looks like. They understand it's not always about, you know, get up a thousand reps or do this or do this. Like, practice is team practice. It's sets, it's this, it's this. And I think it's preparing them for the next level in a really big way and a really good way. You know, we've got guys like Liam who have become a big part of the D2 men's team. And then, obviously, Hunter and Woody are getting their minutes and getting their reps here and there. And, they again, they're doing real good in those times. And I'm the biggest cheerleader on the sideline. <laughs> it's just great to see them shining there as well as at their own age group. Of course. Uh, I want to actually give a special sort of special sort of note to Liam because um, some of the stuff, obviously, as a teammate, he's been incredible. He's a sponge. He works really hard. He's head boy at school. You know, he's got his academics on lock. He's just a very well-rounded kid. Mm-hmm. And me just personally it's awesome sort of playing with a point guard like that and him getting his flowers and you know getting in our 18s england set up and everything it's sort of a testament to him but also the work that you yourself and the club has done so if you do have anything to say on you know liam's well, successes you know on that note, you have to give a yeah on that note alone you have to give a huge mention to like obviously kelson who's had him mm-hmm. for years daniel who had him for years like from united days and stuff like Liam is literally perfect student athlete, like 4.0 GPA, England player, D2 men's. I think he's like top 10 or top five in steals or something. Like just ridiculous for that for a kid, not only of that size but also like he's just a smart kid. He's so yeah. so fast, works hard. He does like he's just perfect athlete. Like he's amazing, amazing oh. student athlete. But of course, now you have to mention like Kelson and Daniel like for developing him, doing so much. Um, I even want to say like props to Barcelona England for finally giving him a shot at national team like recently. That was big. Been advocating for him since the start of the season. Mm. But, yeah, I'm happy he's finally made that or been given that opportunity to take that. So now you're you've won, you know, the national cup. Um the under eighteens this year are potentially on their way to winning, you know, more accolades <laughs> along the way. Um, what's next for you? What's next for the under-18 setup? What's what's the next step? Well, right now, it's just literally just take a game at a time. Um, like, literally, right now, the guys are going through hell week. So they've got game... They had a game on Wednesday. Everyone had a game on Wednesday because it was Capital Titans versus St. Charles um, and, obviously, Crest, which our other academy was playing against um, Bracknell. So, like, every... and. Our other guys like Chris and Ferdy are playing for Mayfield and Dagenham Park. So those guys, every player played on Wednesday. They all played on Thursday against London United um, in another National League game. Luckily, you've got Friday off. And then Saturday, we've got a road trip to Cardiff. Sunday, we've got a game against Bristol. It's it's a tough week for them, but mm. it's, a, it's, you know, it's not something they're not used to. They all play EYBL. They're all used to playing four or five games in four or five days. But that's been that's been a tough stretch for them. So mm. I think coming into this, hopefully seal out this weekend how we know we can and how we should um, finish the league. Sorry, finish the regular season as conference champions. That's obviously the goal. And then from there, go into the playoffs and then do what we can from there. And we'll of take course. that one game at a time. Of course. And you know me, um, a loud-ass cheerleader from wherever it is I am, so I'm going to be making all that noise. Um, so let's talk to you. Obviously, I've known you for... Don- donkey's years now and um you know i've seen your growth as a skills coach as a strength and conditioning coach and you know for the um last couple of years seeing you as a head coach um it's you know it's been nice to see your growth you know knowing knowing fully well where you were with you know robin and everybody there and our gal and everything to see where you are now like the maturity and the growth has been great um from a personal standpoint but um you made an announcement a few weeks ago that you wasn't going to um, be a head coach uh, next season, but you would still be involved with the club. Um, just talk me more. Talk talk to us more about the uh, the decision, that decision, and you know what your capacity is going to be moving forward. 
Yeah, so um, I think so. That started basically with um, so I took a new job at um, a college in West London. So I was full time at uh, Capital City with London Elite, um, running the bus program there and like doing a little bit of teaching within the school. Um, I got a chance to be a, a full time lecturer, so I had to take that because obviously I got a family. Yeah. So now, so when I took that job and then having so much more freedom, um, just in terms of day to day stuff, like you know, I've been able to see my kids more. Yeah. And stuff like that. So yeah, I made a choice um, with Daniel that I wanted to step back from coaching a little bit, like when it came to like team coaching. Yeah. And start focusing with, still within London Elite because I've already said, um, you know, with the exception of like you know maybe like a BBL team or something, there's no other club I join in England that's not London Elite. Yeah. So I'll still be around London Elite next year as the head of S and C, head of skills. Coach development, which is something I'm quite passionate about because I think that's really integral. I'll yeah. still be coaching, of course, here and there, but it won't be a thing of, you know, me go, me going to Cardiff on the weekend and all that. Stuff. <laughs> um, but no, I think that's, I think that's the most logical next step for me. Of course. Um, you know, I don't, I would love to have co- been able to coach until I'm like 50 and 60 and stuff. But I think it makes more sense to, you know, use the skills that I have in order to, you know, impact the team of coaches, and then the team of coaches can impact. 10, 15, 20 teams of kids. And of then, course. you know, the pyramid like helps itself. Sure, of course. You know, obviously not having your head coach is not going to be the same because, you know, you and your intimidating self sometimes when you stand on the <laughs> sidelines. It's... You're a nice guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know look, I, I, I know you're a nice guy. But from the outside looking in, people look at you like, damn, a big dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big dude. But, you know, um, I know the kids are going to miss, you know, having you around as head coach, but um, I know they'll see you around with, you know, skills and everything like that. Um, but, you know, it's logical to, you know, um, make the step to, you know, just better yourself and, you know, being around your family and everything. And that's fair. That's cool. Um, you know, we respect that. We love that. Um, but what you said there um, has been a testament to what the, what London Elite is all about. I don't want to coach any other team unless it's BBL than London Elite. Mm-hmm. And what's that family atmosphere been like? And how has that sort of influenced the decision to, you know, take a step back from just well, being a coach? You know, like since Lund- so like since Capital Titans and London Elite merged originally, Elite's been without a shadow of doubt, like Daniel of course being like the greatest mentor I've ever had. Like give me Un, unjust opportunities <laughs> like, yeah I, like, I've been exposed to things that I should never have been exposed to like I've been coaching in Europe like co- like sorry coaching in Europe I've been coaching at European camps um again been given those opportunities through Daniel and through the club I made I've made count a huge network I did my master's degree in sports in international sports management basically because of what I did at London Elite and what London Elite's given me mm. But, you know, I'd say London Elite, is, it is a family, you know, you come in, as far again, as far as me and Daniel are concerned, as soon as you put on a London Elite jersey or as soon as you come to a training session, like, you're family now. Yeah. Treat, treat you all the same. Yeah. Like, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, you know, it's a place where, you know, nine times out of ten, I can guarantee that I know most of the kids, like I say most, I know every child within the club from the, or every person in the club from the men's and the university side down to the under tens. Mm. Like, don't get me wrong, I might get your name wrong. <laughs> I do know you, and I can guarantee that, like, the under 14s head coach is the exact same, like, up and down the club, and the under 16s coach is the exact same up and down the club. Mm. It's not like I've got my team, and that's what I focus on, is everyone is part of this whole thing. Yeah. So I think that's important. I think it's really important that it's not just a team anymore. We are a huge part of the community. Like, we have got two, 300 people from Brent and London and surrounding areas involved yeah. in basketball. We have got crazy parents on the sideline that are very supportive <laughs> not only of their kids teams like there's yeah. some mums and dads will turn up at 11 a.m to watch a under 12 game there's some players yeah. under 16 so he's not playing for six hours <laughs> but they're still there they're still supporting the club which you know it's beautiful it's something special of course um and you know every team should have something like that you know the support system at london elite has been amazing um the men's the men's D2 team, as, you know, yours truly is, you know, a part of that, you know. <laughs> just wanted to, you know, put out there and I was on yeah. all of that. That's a whole other conversation for another time because I said some <laughs> stuff. I said some stuff at the beginning of the season. 
before we did anything, but I'm going to get to that later. But, um, you know, we were announced um, as, you know, Division 2 South champions uh, last week with our win against Ipswich. Um, as a part of the club, what do you have to, what do you have a note for, how, how does that make you feel, you know, being a part of, you know, the SNC for the men and, you know, warming them up and, you know, being a part of the club in general? Uh, look, from not just someone that's involved in the men's, but as someone that's just involved in the club or involved in the basketball in general, mm. what you guys have done is huge. Don't get me wrong, what the guys did last year, going from Division 2 to Division 2, I'm uh, sorry, Division 3 to Division 2, that was incredible. But then you guys now going from Division 2 and now you've won a Division 2 title and you're knocking on the door for a Division 1 promotion. And that's, number one, it's insane for you guys as a group, <laughs> was getting group of players, you, Kane, Afra, you got all the under-18s playing up, you got Mike, you got Corey, it's a solid team. Mm. But then also, like, the speed in which it's been done, that in itself is ridiculous. Team's been running domestically for two years. Mm. And already the men's are knocking on the door of Division 1. Every youth team is in the Premier Division. Under-18s are winning. Like, it's just, it's, the growth is rapid. It's, it's beautiful. But now you guys have your work out for yourself because now you've got to keep killing it in the playoffs and then you've got to of keep course. killing it next year too. <laughs> of course, of course. That's the plan. It's all about keeping everything sustainable and just even a shout out on the 14s. They're about to win the league if they win the next two games. So, like, just the culture of doing things the right way across the board from top to bottom and the club is just a sensational piece of work from Daniel and yourself as well and everyone involved at the club. So, you know, I'm really grateful for all of you guys and what you guys have done. Um, and I'm grateful to be a part of that journey. Um, <laughs> We're grateful to have UK UK Dennis Rodman. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I wear ninety one. It's because of you, you know. Dude, I, I demanded that you got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like when one of our preseason meetings, I was like, "Here, yeah. ninety one guaranteed." <laughs> I was this close to asking you to dye your hair before most games. But... Yeah, no, nah, I'm not doing that. I've got I've got grey hair already. Like it's already like halfway there. <laughs> Uh, back to the, let's go. Let's get to the nitty gritty. Like, um, you know, you've got a you've got a camp happening. You know, do you're doing great things, giving back to the youth of the youth in basketball that deserve these opportunities that you're about to give them. Just, um, I'm gonna let you. You know, I'm gonna let you soliloquize and you know tell us what's going on. Um. So yeah, sure. So, um, obviously over my years and helping players like go abroad and all that other stuff. Um, made a few partnerships, made a very good working relationship with elite Eurotalent. Um, they're the same guys that helped Sultan go to the States in the first place and everything else. So we've come together and we're running a, I say big, we're running a, a showcase event in order to try and help as many young British guys and girls get out there as possible. You know, so it's on April 12th and April 13th. So we've literally got everyone from under 20s, under 18s, boys and girls, down to under 16s. And we're just trying to give as many kids opportunities to be, sorry, as many opportunities and as much exposure as possible. Also, we're doing conferences with parents to explain the pathways and how things work. Because a big issue that I find, especially with the under 18s parents and stuff like that, a lot of them believe that, oh, my son's going to get offers from here, here and here. Like, and they think that their kid's Zion Williamson. And it's like, it doesn't work work like that. Like, <laughs> And then also like just the whole high school system and postgrad and stuff. If you don't know it, it's very confusing. Sure. So that's why we're doing the EET UK showcase. So we're going to try and get as many people opportunities to get out as much as they can. How many eyes are going to be on the showcase? <sighs> the the exact number is unknown <laughs> <laughs> because there's some schools that we haven't been allowed to announce as watching the event for various reasons. But there are from elite high schools and prep schools to NAIAs, JUCOs, D1s and D2s will be watching for the next British player, for the next top British player to come through. And it's, again, when we started working on this like a year ago, like a lot of work's gone into this. And there are a lot of British kids that, you know, there are platforms for them to get exposure there are platforms for people to see them dunk and all that other stuff which is fantastic mm. it's amazing and it's a stepping stone but there are guys and girls that just aren't getting the looks that they probably should get yeah i can't mention nate or should i mention names like for example guys like hunter mm. hunter's a d1 d2 yeah. true guard, small forward like hands yeah. down yeah um, i i agree he's a really good player 
like um, Liam is on his own. Like Liam's a realistically skill wise, he's a D one guard, but because of size, he's a D two, D three guard. Someone like him, he should be getting looks mm. more so than just England. There's a kid called Seb, um, Sebastian, Sebastian playing. At oh, Spurs. I know Sebastian. Yeah, 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 I know Sebastian. Seb, he had, we had him for EYBL. Like that kid is special. Yeah. But again, the fact that he hasn't already been receiving offers is questionable. Mm. That's a six seven shooting guard. Yeah. Like there's a lot of guys in this country that are so unknown that need that little boost. Mm. And sadly, you know, like, oh, I play for my national team isn't good enough. Yeah. Or, you know, oh, my coach will sort it. That's They're not going to don't to. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. Like, look, I fly out to America every year. I've done so for the past six years, trying to build a network and connections and stuff. Yeah. I don't know if... And look, I've, literally, I went to New York last year. I think I spent seven days going around, like, every school I could get to. Or like, <laughs> a region of meeting at. You know, but that's... So that's what we're trying to do now. We're trying to help as many kids as possible, get something, go abroad have the pathway explained to them so that it actually makes sense. And, yeah, from there, we'll just keep moving and keep helping. So what's the response been like since you've announced the camp? It's been really good. You know, like, um, the camps, I believe... So we've got slots for the camp because it's only, like, two hours or it's two, two and a half hours because we wanted to get as many people the opportunity to get seen as possible. Sure. Also within a good window of time. Sure. So, like, um, it's not like these mass... Um, program this mass these mass things we have like 200 kids in two hours yeah literally yeah. I capped it at like 25 30 kids over a two hour slot sure you will be able to see every kid play and you'll actually be able to focus on that on that one player sure so um but the interest has been really high I've like I personally sent out an email to every club in the country <laughs> every member of staff of every club in the country so everyone had access to it yeah obviously like posted a lot on socials kids shared it a lot which was great. So it's, the slots are full or they're nearly full right now. Mm. But obviously, look, we've got access to the court. We can stay for longer if we need to, if there's enough kids that want, or there's sure. enough young people that sure. see the value in what we're doing. Sure. So if if any, you know, any youth basketball player watching this at the moment, you know, um, here's this, how can they get involved? How can they, how can they try to sign up for this camp? So if they go online and they search for EET UK Showcase, it'll be one of the first things that come up. It'll tell you the schools that we've been allowed to announce that will be watching. Um, we're even trying to get a few special guests. There's, all, I forgot to mention, there's also a pro agency coming. Okay. Like if you don't want to go to college or high school, maybe you can sign pro somewhere and this agency can help you do that as well. Mm. And it's not, you know, and that's a good agency. They're not going to just send you to... Um, random little village somewhere where you're sharing with <laughs> six guys, which sadly has happened before. You know? Yeah, yeah. We're doing this because we want to ensure that people have good opportunities. Because mm. there's too many guys that have said like, oh, I've played pro here. And it's like, dude, you're basically playing D3 men's life. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not, you're not pro player. <laughs> so what does this mean for the next generation? Because these opportunities don't come as often as... I believe they should. And now you've come out of the woodwork and pulled off something that's huge with regards to the eyes that are going to be on the, on the players and the prospective opportunities from a multitude of different levels that could come from a showcase like this. What does this mean for the next generation? Well, you know, it just means that hopefully more and more guys and girls will be able to get the opportunity that they so desire. You know, there's a lot of a lot of people know that there's a lot of talent in England and Great Britain as a whole, mm. but it's just not being cultivated in the right way. Or the issue that happens a fair bit at a time is it's too late. Mm. Like there's a lot of like under like final year under 18s and those that's when they start reaching out to schools or whatever. Yeah, like not a lot really understand like this stuff doesn't take one month, two months. This this stuff takes can take a year, two years. Yeah. You know, and that's a big thing. And But for me, it's just I'm hopeful to help as many young people as possible get to where they want to be. And if we can help them do that, then we'll do everything we can to help them do that. You know, awesome. this isn't like a quick cash grab or anything. This is a yeah. genuine thing for long-term investment. Awesome. And just repeat that website. We'll pre repeat one more time, like, all the information that, you know, everyone needs to hit up if they want to be involved. 
So the EET UK Showcase is on April 12th and April 13th. April 12th is for the under 18s and under 20s boys. And on, on the 13th is the under 16s and the girls. Awesome. You heard it there. Hit that up. <laughs> April 12th. April 13th. I, I should also mention, like, it's the most affordable thing ever, and everyone gets kit. <laughs> well, there you go. Free like, kit. <laughs> and, not, and not much pee. Let's go. It, look, compared to other things that I've seen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. understand the price, that how people have, like, done certain things in this. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> Again, that's another conversation for another day. Let's not even hit that. Oh, up, we, we can do it right now if you want. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not trying to get. I'm not trying to. You know. I'm not, I'm not, we'll get there. Don't worry. We'll get there at some point. But um, again, April 12th, April 13th, EET UK showcase. Go hit that up. Go get involved. Go give yourself an opportunity. Kieran, you are the man. I appreciate you. I respect you. Let's win some more stuff. Before you disappear into the sunset, <laughs> slightly. Um, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for coming on the Thank show. Thanks for having me, man. Really so good. It. So good, man. Rebound is out. Bushman is saying peace. <laughs>